My name is John Keith. I work for Instantiations, and um, I'm here to give an update on our product. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I have to uh, clear something up from yesterday. Um, yesterday, Donald McQueen made a presentation on Jaguars, and he neglected, unfortunately, to mention what small spot they use. <laughs> A terrible oversight. <laughs> so I need to clear that up. It was visual age small talk from IBM, now VA small talk. No, oh, you just you realize I neglected to mention the whole small talk media headaches use. Well, I believe Suzanne was the first one to point out this oversight in that she said, hmm, Donald mentioned visual but he never said anything about uh, visual age small talk. <laughs> so, he's new. Yes, he's new. We'll, we'll train <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm here for my, for my, yearly, uh, my yearly update. Uh, it's going to be a little different this year, uh, but not a lot, and just in terms of how it's done. Um, so first I wanted to, uh, to talk about um, kind of what's going on with the company. You know, we've just kind of completed our first year as a pure small talk company. And during that time, compared to the previous year, our number of users are going up. Our revenue increase continues to grow. It's grown every year since Instantiations took this product over. And because the revenue continues to grow, we're able to grow our engineering staff. So since last year, um, four engineers have joined our team, and we're also employing contractors for additional capacity. So uh, I think that you're going to see some of the fruits of the new instantiations, instantiations the third time around, um, in terms of uh, what we'll be rolling out in the future. You know, it, takes, it takes a little time to get, to, uh, get up ahead of steam, uh, but uh, it's kind of like, watch this space. Um, also, in terms of uh, recent events, uh, we've been working with, uh, with the uh, Hasso Faulkner Institute on a bachelor project. They did uh, GTK plus bindings for Linux for us. And actually, two of the students on that project are here uh, at ESO, um, Bobby and Laura Hoffman, and Andre. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up. Reed, did I say it? Did I pronounce it correctly? Uh, these guys are great. These guys are great. Uh, so we've been very pleased with uh, working with them, and we hope to be able to do more of this uh, sort of uh, participation with universities in the future. In addition, we continue to, uh, to uh, participate in conferences. Last year was the first year we actually attended small talks. We sponsored it in previous years. And I will be there again this year. <laughs> Do we have to all march back to the restaurant? <laughs> um, we also have uh, converted our, uh, our forum over to using uh, uh, Google Groups so that we can be aggregated along with all the other small talk products, finally, um, on Small Talk World. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and uh, we have just recently put up a, a new video and podcast page on our website where we're, we're gathering together um, both new and uh, historic uh, videos and podcasts on uh, dealing with VA small talk. So uh, many of you might find that interesting. So. Um, since I was here last, uh, we've done one release, 803, um, but that's, that's sort of continuing in a series of version 8 releases, and um, we're going to really not talk about any of these. We're going to talk about what's next, um, what's new, what's coming. Um, if uh, you look in your package, your envelope, you found this data sheet that says V85 coming soon. 
Um, I will tell you at the end of the talk when soon is. <laughs> I, I like it usually to be VA5 is available, but didn't quite make it. So um, what, we, what have we done for version 8.5? Um, we have done a, a fair amount of new development um, in terms of development tools, uh, infrastructure, graphics and windowing for the product, uh, and web interface. And I'm going to talk about each of these, some at length, some uh, uh, in a very short uh, uh, period of time. So uh, the most, the thing that we like best, the thing that, uh, that we think is uh, the best new feature is our code assist. And you know, developers using VA Smalltalk have a problem. Uh, as we get older, like I am, the problem becomes even more pronounced. We can't remember things. Especially, we can't remember long names of methods and you know, exactly how they're bicapitalized. Um, it's just too much for up here. So, um, the solution, obviously, is to let the computer help. And uh, so, that's, uh, that's what we've done. Um, and we have added code assist to our browsers. Uh, and, and we did this kind of in two layers. First, we uh, developed um, a kind of a, a content assist framework that you could use inside a browser or outside a browser. Uh, and the example we, uh, that we ship actually is a little word processor um, that uses content assist. Um, and then we built content assist for the browsers on top of um, and I want to say right here, this, this feature was done by our very newest employee. Um, and uh, so we are getting, we're getting new people in, younger people with fresh ideas and lots of energy, just like I see out here in the audience. So our, uh, our code assist is configurable, and I'm actually going to show you a little movie so that will explain this uh, a little bit better. Um, and it is context sensitive in terms of its autocomplete. Context sensitive means it's just not going to show you every possible method that uh, might be available. But it's going to base uh, the, method, the, uh, the things that it shows you and will actually suggest classes. Um, it will suggest uh, pool dictionary entries. It will suggest methods, all in the appropriate place. And it's going to do that based on parsing the code that you've already entered and making um, sensible suggestions. And then it's going to take those suggestions and sort them in a reasonable order. So, um, locals before pseudo variables, before pool variables, public before private. Um, we, we feel kind of like uh, classes that extend sub application are probably not as prevalent or as used as other classes, so we sort that one out. Um, the other thing is that when we put up a suggestion, we provide additional descriptive information about the suggestion. So if we suggest a method, we'll show the class where that method is defined. Um, if you use a pool variable that's scoped, in other words, you identify the pool name, double colon, um, pool variable, uh, we'll show you the value of that pool variable. And if it's unscoped, then we'll, we'll show you the pool dictionary that is defined just as a double check. So it helps you um, pick the right, the right suggestion. The other thing it, uh, it does is it deals with ambiguous receivers. So if you, uh, if you uh, type something like word collection new add an array be and then you activate code assist, um, either explicitly or implicitly, um, the question is, what is the user really thinking about? Is, he trying to, is the user trying to apply um, a, is trying to invoke a selector on the array, or, does, or are you really trying to complete the add colon selector? And so those will both be off because only the user knows we don't. Um, 
parentheses are auto-inserted uh, for method completion. Uh, and if, if you ask for code assist right at the top of the method, um, then it will offer all the methods that um, can be overwritten in this class. So that way you can say, oh, somebody else has already implemented the add before, and I want to override it here. And when you, uh, when you are doing completion, it will auto-insert the, uh, the parameters. So demo time, except I'm not doing a demo. Because, just because, because I have seen um, downloads too. Okay, so instead, I have a video that we did. Um, and this is, um, so on, uh, on this side, I have like a little script to, uh, that is, uh, describes what it is we're doing. And on this side is a workspace where uh, the movie is going to enter some code and show what happens. Okay? So I'm going to start and stop the movie occasionally to kind of explain what's going on. So the first thing is we're going to show the, um, the setup with them. Okay? So we're going to go through the menu, find the setup, and uh, <coughs> Show you the so this this is a, this is a parameter setup menu where you can uh, customize code assist. Um, probably the people in the back can't see it, so I'll just talk about a few of the entries. You can turn code assist on and off. Obviously, code assist has some performance uh, impact, and so if you don't want to use it, you can turn it off. Um, it allows you to change the um, selector that's used for explicit code assist. So in this case, control space says, I've typed something, I want to explicitly ask for code assist here. And I'll show you in a second why that's important. Um, you can see, you can customize how many suggestions are shown, which effectively um, controls the size of the pop-up window um, that is, is displayed. Uh, so this is how many are shown in that window. You scroll, if you say I want to say 15, then it shows 15, and you scroll to see any past that. If you say I want to say three, you still get as many suggestions, you just have to scroll. Um, you can enable or disable auto pop-up uh, code assist. So auto pop-up is sort of what we're all familiar with code assist. You're typing along and you know, all of a sudden something will pop up with suggestions. So you can turn that on and off, you, you can control the, the delay until that pop up appears. Uh, the default is half a second. Um, then um, other things are you can you can put their method visibility. You can say I want to see public methods, I want to see private methods, I want to see all methods. So there's a great deal of customization available for the code assist. Things 
start the movie. Oh, and you saw on the right side, it, show, it actually shows you the classes where that, where that method is applied. Okay. Now we're going to do a little more as we copy some code.
And so I'm, I'm just going to show a short little example, not a demo, of what's required to keep two different logs using this framework. So this is an example not of some internal functionality where we have to say, uh, oh, I want to log an error happens or something like that. But this is an actual application log. And this application log involves a bank that has to uh, keep monthly logs of uh, foreign transactions and weekly logs of foreign transactions over a certain amount. So one of the things that makes this logging framework uh, really useful is that it is customizable externally uh, through, through descriptive information. And uh, VA Smalltalk has a customization file that's read at startup. And you can put entries in the customization file that will change the behavior of the logger. You can, you can change the format of records that are logged. You can change filters that will control uh, what's logged. For example, um, this, this first specification uh, tells you where to log. Uh, it tells you what the, what the log level is. This is an information log. Um, it gives you a pattern. Okay. To uh, this is the pattern of the log record, and it says once you know, we're going to do a monthly log. Okay. So you can change all this external from your program which is kind of cool, something that you've never had before. Um, then within your program, you can provide um, specialized logging print string-like statements uh, to the uh, And you can put tests in your program to effectively say um, which logging should I use. So it's a combination of external customization and internal invocation. And the output is something like this. Mark Twain has been doing foreign transactions, but Fred Smith has been doing very large foreign transactions. Okay. So that's, that's, that's logging, and that's, that's something that, that we're really interested in. We plan to uh, kind of convert all our internal ad hoc logging to use this new logging framework. Another problem that, uh, that we've had is that uh, our, we have a lot of customization in VA Smalltalk. You saw just one example of it in, uh, in the customization of code assist. But there's lots of different ways of doing it. Some is uh, externalized, some is not. It's sort of like a hidden legend about how you do this customization. So we have uh, we have started to work on a preference setting framework to once again standardize the way customization is done, um, standardize the management of the customization, standardize the documentation of the customization. And we rolled out the first part in version 8.5. Uh, in future releases, this will be extended. So, you know, within our, within our customization file, I can this is a standard Windows-like INI file. So there's stanzas and keyword value pairs within the stanzas. Um, the framework types the values so that you can do validation automatically. Um, preference settings are, are uh, managed by your application, so each application manages its own preferences. They're read from the INI file at startup, or you can reread them later. Um, and in order to use it, you, have, you only have to implement three methods. Valid settings, saying what the, the types of the, uh, of the settings are. Current settings, which provides the default values. And set current settings, which takes the values that are provided and puts them in the receiver place where they're actually going to be. So this is, a rather, this is a rather complicated little piece of, uh, of code, but essentially what it says um, is that in an application, stands that name the same as the application, there's a keyword, FP level, 
and its value can be 0 to 9 inclusive. That means it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, can't be, can't be minus 1, can't be 10, can't be anything else. And it's an integer. So it can't be 0, 4, 1. Then uh, the second uh, specification says, well, here's, here's a stanza name that's not standard. It's not named the same as the application. And it's got a keyword install path, and it's a directory type. So you should specify a directory. <coughs> there's, a, there's quite an extensive number of, uh, of possible types, including arrays of types. So um, then current settings provides the default. So here, application name, keyword, bitmap path. Uh, default is an, an empty array. Okay? Bitmap path with empty array. So if you specify nothing, you don't get the path. And finally, a method to set the values from the preferences into uh, <coughs> folders. And folders are generally class instance or, or class variables, but they don't have to be. Um, this method effectively extracts the value that uh, is provided in the INI file and sets it into a class. <coughs> so that's that's what there is to the current support. We've converted uh, um, a part, but not all, of the settings that are currently in the INI file, and, and over time we'll be moving more and more settings into the INI file. Um, the next thing that we did is um, add deprecation exception support. Um, lots of small parts have had this for a while. We haven't, um, which meant that if we, were, if we needed to deprecate an API method because time moved on and things had improved, uh, the only way we had to do that was to uh, mark it in a category deprecated. Or worse yet, remove it. Just arbitrarily. Now it'll throw an exception um, you know, based on the fact that we code it to throw an exception. And you can handle it in several ways. So the technique is still, still categorized as deprecated, but replace the method content now, we're at the seaside using stuff like this, probably other small box, same sort of thing. Say why it's deprecated, when it's deprecated, and uh, provide you know, the alternative replacement. So that's how you get the deprecation exception from. Uh, as far as handling it, uh, it can be locked to an in-memory log. Uh, you can raise, you can raise a, a message prompter with it. Um, or you can write a message to the transcript. And in the documentation, we provide a little script to dump the unit memory log. Um, if you don't dump it, it's, it's refreshed every time the image is started, so that we don't, we don't create a huge uh, in memory log with unuseful information. Um, over time, we're, we're expanding our support of Windows Common Controls. These are, these are, sort of the non-standard in terms of the universe controls that are implemented only on Windows. And for this release, we've added the rebar control. Rebars look like this. They're the things on your toolbar that have the little rippers so that you can stretch them and shrink them. So this is, this is the first step in the <coughs> stage release of uh, support of the, of the Windows common controls that we haven't supported in the past or upgrading the support to full support the ones we have supported in the past. Um, we've, added, we've added support for um, additional sorts of uh, fax formats. Our customers, our users get lots of faxes uh, throughout their business. And one of the most common formats is uh, E4 bi-level encoding, which is uh, a newer encoding level, and it's one that we haven't supported in the past, so we added that. Um, we brought Seaside up to date um, in that uh, we're at uh, the current release level plus fix 
fixes through about a week and a half. And um, our customers also have a problem um, needing to maintain persistent connections for HTTP when they have dynamic content. And one of the problems with, it, with dynamic content is you don't necessarily know when you establish the connection um, how large the content is going to be. And generally, if you establish a persistent connection, you need to know that up front. But HTTP chunk transfer encoding allows you to um, actually send the information over the persistent connection in chunks, in pieces, uh, with a header that identifies the size of that particular piece of the message. And then at the end, there's a null, a null string to indicate that it's completely finished. So we have that absolutely. And um, plus or minus 60 bug fixes and small enhancements that I really haven't talked about yet. Um, and that, uh, that makes up the content of version 8.5. Officially available tomorrow. Uh, but that's tomorrow, USA time. <laughs> so, and, and it may be afternoon tomorrow, USA time. So I suggest waiting until Monday to, uh, to try and have some of it if you're interested. Um, the, uh, the people back at the office are busy updating the website as I speak. To, uh, to show the, the new information about the new release. Thank you. So, looking to the future, um, this is this is um, kind of our, our standard release schedule, approximately twice a year. Um, we're looking for the next release, uh, end of Q1 2012. <coughs> and um, as as we define the content of that release, it isn't defined yet at the moment. As we find the content of the release, it will be on our roadmap page on our website. So if you give us a couple of weeks, um, that roadmap page will be updated with the, the planned content for version 8.1. Um, we go through all sorts of different uh, sort of categories of um, possible enhancements and as I, go, as I go through these very rapidly, you'll say, yeah, I've seen that there before. Yeah, I've seen that there several times before. Well, you know, things make the list, but they don't always make the top of the list. But they don't fall off the bottom of the list either because they're important, but not most important. So we're still working on the code. Um, we continue to work on Seaside. We'll be participating in the Seaside Sprint. <coughs> We're working on, on GUI look and feel, and one of the things is the GDK2 uh, plus uh, framework that the, uh, the guys from HPI did. Um, it still needs some work to uh, turn it into product code, but um, you will see that at some point in the future. We're going to, as I said, we're going to extend Windows Common Control across the whole range. Um, in terms of development tools, Code Assist was, is a first release, so there'll obviously be uh, new things to do there. We, uh, we have a small project underway right now to do a Monticello reporter. It's not on our official release plan yet, um, but uh, we are working on it. Um, for the settings framework, um, we want to uh, kind of generalize it to the whole product and build a dialogue over it. So manage the settings, not with your favorite line editor, but with a dialogue in small talk. Um, you know, we did a port of war. Well, actually, Neil did a port of war um, some time ago. And it's uh, been reasonably inactive since then. Um, we're going to circle back to it and, uh, and bring that up to date. Um, one of the things that, that's high on our list is security. And we've had, we've had support for OpenSSL in association with HTTPS for some time, but um, we're built on a backup version of OpenSSL, and the API has changed. And it also is not all of OpenSSL. And finally, it's integrated into the uh, 
HTTPS framework is not a separate, <coughs> accessible, um, and usable security framework. So that's that's something that we're going to be working on. Um, VMs, I uh, love VMs. Um, we're having we're having lots of discussions about what we should do there. There isn't a plan yet uh, that's firm, uh, but uh, we have uh, we think we have a good direction uh, to make improvements. Um, we're looking at external interfaces. G port looks like a good way to get to Java, and um, we have uh, increasing pressure from our users for .NET, C sharp, uh, sort of. Um, if any of you uh, have installed uh, VA Smalltalk, you know our installer um, isn't uh, the most attractive or usable installer in the world, and we have a, pro we have a project underway um, to uh, improve that greatly. And finally, uh, we've, we're working on class libraries to make them uh, more flexible by implementing hashing and sorting policies instead of coding that functionality into the class as collections. How do you get it? You can download a free evaluation copy. You can buy developer licenses. That's what we like you to do. Um, we occasionally do development builds that we release. We also put code into a um, Open source repository called Vast Goodies. If you're a VA Smalltalk user, uh, I hope you know about Vast Goodies. Um, you can be a committer on an open source project, not just a VA Smalltalk open source project, but um, you know, if, you're, if you're working on uh, an extension for Smalltalk, pretty much anywhere, uh, we're very open to giving you a paid up license to VA Smalltalk. Or you can, uh, you can work for an educational institution. We have academic licenses that are paid up licenses. So there's a lot, of, a lot of good ways to acquire the product and try it out. Um, here's, uh, here's our contact information, um, short and sweet. Write me if you have questions. That's the presentation.
Thank you very much. I'm going to be here.